Yo, what's up guys? Jay Smiley here, coming with another episode. And in today's episode, with it being Black History Month, I just wanted to share my journey with you guys and um, tell you my story and how I made it as a pro rugby player. So um, I started the game at a late age, so about 18 years old. But for like people who want to get into the sport, whether it's football, rugby or any other sports, the way I see it, like age is no barrier. Like if you have the mindset, the drive, the determination, like anything is possible and like obviously you can reach your goals. Um, so I'm currently at the professional stage now, but obviously I'm willing to just like keep working hard and improving and improving as a player and just being the best player that I can possibly be. Um, over the years, I've watched numerous like athletes, and that's motivated me just to keep training and just being the best that I can possibly be. So, first of all, Jermaine Defoe, he's been recently following my journey, and I've watched him for a number of years now. And he's obviously he's obviously killed the Premier League. He's been there for a number of years, and he's a top striker. So um, that's obviously motivated me to just keep working hard, and that's what I want to do. I just want obviously keep playing for the like for, for as long as possible, like he's been doing. And another athlete is Floyd Mayweather. Like with Floyd Murphy, he's undefeated, he's a multi-millionaire and he always trains like he's got nothing and I love that, that mindset about him. In rugby, like because I play on the wing, I like watch, I, back in the days I used to watch Marcus Bay and Les Nicolo and in other positions I used to watch Kyle Eastmond and both Leon and Kyle Price as well. So with those athletes, they've all liked um, in sort of a way motivated me just to be the best athlete that I can possibly be and just obviously just keep motivating me to just put the work in as well. So anyways, I'll let you crack on with the footage. I hope you enjoy it anyways. Make sure you like and subscribe. Keep up to date with all my stuff and keep following my journey. Peace. What's that, what's that, who wants war? The order and time is my man sure. iPhones locked and packed with lyrics. I write my own stuff while you my mimic. Step in a room, all eyes on me. And still man didn't even need no gimmick. I love confronting a fake ass brother. Cause there in the flesh, I see man fidget. There in the flesh, I see man fidget. That's how I know enough man and not quit it. That's how I know enough man don't... So before I start this video, I just want to give a big thanks to my mother um, for always being there for me and supporting me and um, just motivating me, like um, helping me to be a better person and a better athlete. And um, I just appreciate that. And also, I just want to thank one of my good friends as well, Richie Barnett. Um, he was an ex-professional rugby player and he just obviously um, gave me tips on how to train better and obviously like um, the insight of the elite environment and what it's like there because he's been there for numerous for numerous years so I also appreciate that as well and there's other people I can mention but like um, you all know who you are and I just like I appreciate it because obviously it's helped me to obviously be a better person a better athlete and to just obviously like just keep working hard so um, now I'm just going to get on with the video I'm going to share with you my journey so I hope you enjoy it once again I'll let you crack on with it yeah, so sports has always been a massive part of my life from a young age as my dad was a professional boxer for a number of years. Uh, so I used to go watch his fights sometimes and he used to hang around with different other fighters like uh, Junior Witter, he was like a WBC world champion in his weight class so I used to go see his fights as well which was like a good experience. Also my mum did a track running at school so it was only a matter of time until I got involved in sports as I got older. So I went to uh, Bradford Academy High School I never was really into like being a professional sportsman so like I didn't really obviously I did pee and stuff but like that wasn't like my end goal like to be honest with you like I wanted to be a lawyer so that was that was my aim to be a lawyer so um, once I left there I decided to do six form elsewhere so I went to Tong High School and um, well the lawyer plans went out the window when I went there because I was about to do A level English but as soon as I saw that book over the holidays, I thought, nah, man, this isn't for me. So I ended up like sacking that off and then um, ended up doing PE. So I ended up doing double PE in science. So I ended up doing that. I enjoyed it. Um, I still didn't have any thoughts of what I wanted to do, really. So I just wanted to do something on the sport side of things, something that I enjoyed doing, really. And then um, obviously one night I went home and I watched something called progressive soccer. And it was very motivating to be fair, like I don't know how I managed to like get it to get it like, but like it was just very motivating and like the guy basically just said like obviously age is no barrier, like you can make it a professional sports no matter how old you are and that just clicked on from there. I just thought, you know what, like this is what I wanna do, obviously I wanna work towards being a professional like athlete. And um, since that day, since I watched that episode, like I just wanted to obviously strive to be the best that I could possibly be. Like first of all, like after watching that, I wanted to be a footballer. That was my first aim to be a professional footballer. Like, um, 
obviously I worked every day, I tried training hard. I didn't have the best knowledge of how to train as I do now. Like obviously my diet and stuff was all right, I guess, but like it could have been better. But like obviously I thought to myself, I just want to push myself to the limit and see if I can do it. So, so what I did was I had a trials for West Yorkshire County. Um, it didn't quite go to plan. Um, in fact, I'll give you a story on that. It was up in uh, Woodlesford in Leeds. So I went down there. Um, it was it was a really nice pitch and stuff, but I went there and then just all of a sudden you just see like players that have just come from like Chesterfield, come from Leeds United, Bradford City, even like Premiership clubs, man. So, and obviously you just see them, obviously they know the coach already, they know everybody, you know what I mean? So I just, I just felt obviously like I'd have to work twice as hard for it, you know what I mean? Because obviously I don't really know anyone in that, in that like, in that level. That was the first time I was stepping up to that level, you know what I mean? So we had we had a few games and stuff like um, I was playing out of position. I normally used to play on obviously up top, but they had me playing on the wing. Um, like I scored and stuff, but like overall, like I didn't feel I didn't feel like I played at my best that day. So I didn't I didn't get in. I didn't get in in the end. And then I, it didn't discourage me, so I just kept working out over pre-season. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, my training method should have been a bit better, but I didn't have a lot of knowledge at training back then as I do now. So. I just obviously did the best that I could possibly do for myself. Like watched a couple of YouTube videos, kept watching progressive soccer, watching other professionals and see what they were doing. So I just try and focus. And then um, um, after that, when I went to Leeds City College, I went and up joining Father Celtics Academy. And then there, and then it just kicked on from there. So pre-season started, I was looking sharp and stuff. But then like after a couple of weeks, a couple of months, I just stopped enjoying it basically. It was just due to the fact of the coaches really like I just, lost love for the game due to like I wasn't really getting any feedback and I was improving like I was even asking after every game I was improving but I never really got any responses like they're saying oh we'll get back to you and stuff but I never really heard anything so it just kind of like got me an eggshells really because I didn't know how to obviously improve as a player and then like a um, couple of weeks down the line I just like it wasn't the fact that I hated football it was just I was coming to that stage where I thought like is this sport for me like could I obviously go somewhere else and do like do like um, better and like obviously make it professional it's something that I enjoy as much as football and I just thought um I saw a few like obviously rugby players coming out of training at um, Leeds City College and obviously there were there was obviously affiliated with Leeds Rhino so I went to go ask one of them and then they were just saying like come down for a session mate you know what I mean like a couple of sessions won't hurt you so I went down for a session like at Leeds um at Kirkstall training centre where Leeds Rhinos train coach you were called Russ really nice guy um, he just said obviously like um, you're looking good like obviously you need to obviously work on your skills obviously which is like cause I haven't played rugby since I was like a little kid really so he just said brush upon your skills obviously just like but like I think obviously if you work on that and obviously obviously improve over time obviously you'd be a good player so I just thought to myself like I really enjoyed them sessions and I really enjoyed every, all the players around me so I just thought you know what I'm gonna give this a try a few weeks into training, a few months, I ended up playing my first game. It was a Rugby Nines tournament. Um, not gonna lie to you, it was kind of like very, very difficult, obviously, because I hadn't really tackled anybody. Obviously, like passing and stuff were just totally like different. But um, I really enjoyed it. And then after that, I played my first ever like um, 30 in a side game. It was, um, where was it? It was in Huddersfield, actually. I can't remember the graph. I think it was St. Joseph's Ground. So we ended up playing over there. And then I only played like the last 20 minutes, but I got an interception and then I ended up running like 90 metres. Um, I don't know how I didn't score it, but like I ended up getting caught on the 10 metre line, obviously. But then obviously my teammates scored after that. So that was a good a good break that I did. And then after that, um, I just tried like learning as much as possible, watching a lot of videos, just like asking like teammates and stuff, just how I, I can improve with the player. And then just obviously even asking coach, my coach and his opinion and stuff. And just kept working hard from there. Um, I tried different positions, so obviously now, I'm, as you know, I'm a winger. I even tried playing like second row. I played, I even played prop at one point. I played centre. I just tried learning the game as much as possible, like in a short space of time. So like, um, after my college was done, um, I ended up like going back to my old amateur club called Whipsy Warriors. So I ended up doing a season there. So I played like under 18s. Like I played a few games on the winger, under 18s and centre, but then like they pushed me towards the second row. Like, um, I wasn't, I was like, I wasn't too keen on it, but like they just said obviously because I was bigger than the other players, they wanted me to go in second row for the under 18. So I just went along with it and just tried learning from it. I ended up getting good stats. I ended up scoring like maybe a try every game. And then ended up um, playing open age as well. So I was playing for the first team in the open age team. 
And then my first game was pretty good to be fair. I ended up, um, I ended up scoring on my debut. I think I was about 18 then. And obviously I got some good feedback from the players and the manager as well. But um, I just obviously kept trying to work hard, keep trying to work hard in training and then just like try to improve myself as a player overall. Yeah, so after my season was done at Wibsey, um I got trials for the um, England, um, England Lions. Um, it was like the best amateur players and for the under 18s team. So ended up trialing there. I got I got in, I got offered like obviously to, for the second stage of the trials, but like that week I was planning on going to Australia, you see. So I wanted to go to Australia for like a month, obviously learn the game. So I ended up having to turn that down because obviously Australia was a really big opportunity for me. Um, I ended up going to Australia for a month. So I ended up like staying at my cousin's house. He used to play rugby. He used to be at Bradford Bulls Academy. He used to be at Rhinos Academy. And then he ended up going to Australia to go play for Melbourne Storm, um, the um, interest league team. And then like um, he ended up stopped doing that and then he ended up just working on his, like, his career, which is... Um, He's doing like personal training, working on his own business as well. So obviously I wanted to go up there and see him because I hadn't seen him in a good few years. So I went over there and we ended up going down to Wyon Roos actually, which was a feeder team for Sydney Roos at the time. So we stepped outside and then like, we just saw like over six rugby pitches, like a big, like a massive setup, like a restaurant, like inside with just like a massive like office. And then like, you just had like, restaurants inside cafes you had you had like a big gym and then my cousin was just like wow this is this is the dream because like you know what i mean and i was just like yeah you know what i mean like it was very exciting so we ended up having a meeting with a coach called rip taylor um he basically like um he knew glenn morrison who was based in the uk who i've been obviously liaising with back then and then um he got me in there he got me training and it was, really, it was a really good experience. I trained with a lot of Roosters players who are playing now. So Iluni Vunakisi he was a Roosters player. Um, Matt Cavalu and like a good few other players as well who are like noticeable now in the NRL. And it was just, it was really good for me just to learn off those players because obviously they're playing at the best league, the best rugby league league in the world, obviously. And like, um, it was just good to learn off a really good coach like Rip Taylor as well because he's had so, many, so much experience. He's been around a lot of top coaches in the past and he's obviously, he knows his stuff. So um, that also helped me to be a better player. And then um, once I got back after that month, um, I had like a few trials. So I was training with Keith Lacougas for a bit. I was learning off them and then ended up deciding to go to London Broncos Academy for like a, a month on trial. Um, it didn't work out there because um, I just wanted to obviously go back to, I wanted to go up north basically because like in rugby league, obviously um, up north, obviously there's more teams there. so. And I was um, expected to go to university that year as well, so I just decided to um, go up north and then just try and explore my other offers, like see what I had up north, and then just focus on my university as well. Because also, like, I wanted to become a professional player, but also it's always good to have a backup plan just in case anything fails. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, I believe in myself. I know that um, nothing would fail. Like, obviously, I believe in myself, but like, it's just the fact of like you always got to have a backup plan, even if you finish playing. You've always got to have like something to fall back on. That's what I've always been taught from a young age. So. I just had to put my education, you know, education like as a priority as well as my rugby. So that's why I chose to like go up north. Um, so I went up north, went to university, and then obviously I started playing for the university side. So I went to Leeds Beckett, went to be Leeds Beckett for a year. Um, I ended up having, I ended up dropping out because I didn't really enjoy sports science that much. I didn't really like it. There were too much maths involved, and I've been there and done that with maths. I passed it, and I don't. I just didn't really want to like do that sort of stuff anymore, it just wasn't for me. Like I was only like going to university just to obviously like have that have that as a backup plan obviously but obviously to play the rugby and to try and get seen by other clubs. So like um, I decided to obviously quit um, university after that first year. Yeah so one of my mates from university was playing for Jamaica Sevens so I just asked him like um, what did you have to do to get in there and like who did you contact and he gave me a contact um, his name was Hewton and later that evening we had a chat and um, he just basically said to me why don't you just try rugby union like it'd be a good it's a good sport and obviously like um, with your speed um, if we speed them, it'd be really good for you to like try out sevens as well because obviously it's a big pitch and there's only seven players, so you'll get a lot of space to like run through with your speed. So like I thought to myself, yeah, that's it. It'd be, it'd be a good opportunity for me. Like, like I always want to keep my options open, so I thought I'd give it a crack. Um, next couple of weeks, I went down to Finchley Rugby Club where they train. 
and it was a really good experience. A lot of players had like senior caps for Hong Kong Sevens, World Cup Sevens, stuff like that. So it was just really, really good just to learn off them. Even like the core skills are like Sevens, like you have to be like a halfback. So even with going, even going there, like it was just a really good experience. I learned how to pass off both sides, like far distances. Like I learned different skills and stuff, which helped me to improve the player. Even if I didn't like choose to play Sevens, like it just helped me to be a better rugby player overall. I managed to play a few games for Jamaica Sevens as well, so one of the one of the ones that I played was the Only Sevens. Um, I really enjoyed it. A few of my family members came down. It was a really good day. I ended up scoring a good few tries. Um, the result didn't go our way, to be fair though, because obviously I think I can't remember where we finished. We finished about fourth, so like obviously it wasn't the best result, but I still enjoyed it. Really good experience. For after that, I might have just tried obviously contacting a lot of like. Um, rugby Union 15s teams, like Premiership teams, Championship teams to see what I could get and the one that stood out for me the most was Doncaster Knights Academy so um, they offered me obviously to come down to their university which was uh, Doncaster College and obviously train with Doncaster Knights Academy full time so I went down there, it was really good actually because obviously um, the pre-season was pretty tough um, obviously it helped me to like improve all my skills that I've already learnt with the sevens, improve my knowledge of the game and it was really like, it was tough to be fair because obviously I've come from rugby league and I've only played rugby league at a short time so like obviously learning rugby union is, is really difficult, you have to learn the players like even people say as a winger it's the same thing, it's not because in rugby union like for example in rugby league you stay out wide, obviously you catch you come inside for a scoop and stuff like that. But in rugby union, you've got to run off number 10. You've got to be inside, inside. Like, you have to say if you're the blind side winger, so you've got your two wingers. If you're the blind side winger, you've got to obviously come inside from the 10 and run through the middle and stuff like that. So it's two different sports, really. So obviously, um, learning both is very difficult. Yeah, I really enjoyed it at Doncaster. I played about 14 games, I think, and scored about 10 and 14. So I really enjoyed it. So like after that, um, I built my highlight highlights package for obviously both Rugby Sevens and obviously Doncaster Knights Academy, and obviously merged them into one. And then obviously that caught the eye of um, Halifax Rugby League, who was like impressed with their footage. And um, they offered me to just come down in um, my rugby union off season and then play for them while I was at Doncaster. So I thought it was a no brainer because, like, once I finished playing, I wanted to obviously keep playing and improving myself because, like I said, I didn't play amateur for long. So I just wanted to get a lot of games out, like, just try and bang loads of games out just to get as much experience as possible. So, and Halifax as well, it's a big club, like, the fan base is outstanding, like, the coaching is good, the players were sound, so it was like also one of the best decisions I've ever made. So I went to Halifax, I signed with them for a season and um, I really enjoyed my time there. Like it was a it was a really good professional environment. Like they were doing really well in the league as well. And um, I just played mostly in the reserve league. So obviously we played the likes of Bradford Bulls, Hull FC, Wakefield, Trinity and then like a good few teams like that, Super League teams. So it was a very good challenge in league. So I enjoyed my time there, I thought I played really well. Um, the fan base was really supportive of me as well, obviously, because I'm playing like playing both at Doncaster and playing at Halifax, so um, it was just really good. Um, the coaching was good as well. And then um, after that, um, I decided to obviously just stick to um, Halifax because um, I just feel like my career was going better in that direction. Like I was training with the first team sometimes as well, and I managed to play like a first team game against Sheffield Eagles, which I really enjoyed, and I'll never forget the moment as well. The result didn't go our way, but like, we played well to say obviously they have a really experienced side and then obviously Sheffield went on to go win the whole cup like it was at, um, the 1895 cup so Sheffield went to go on and win it so I just thought it was a really good experience for me and, and the other younger players that was involved in that squad. After that I ended up signing with Bradford Bulls for the following season. Um, it, um, I ended up leaving before lockdown um, I explained in my previous video the reasons for it so um, feel free to check that out and then um, after that obviously we had the lockdown so from March and it lasted about six seven months and we're still obviously we're not 100 percent and obviously I'm not too sure when it's gonna like get back to normal but all, all I just tried doing was just working hard working on my core skills just working on my obviously strength and condition I made a gym in my, in my house and just tried just obviously like just just being the best player that I can possibly be. And then um, a few months later, I ended up signing with uh, Swinton Lions for the 2021 season. So I'm just obviously preparing for that. I'm looking forward to it because obviously, like it's a really good coaching setup. Like um, all the players seem sound, like everything like there seems really good. And obviously they're in the championship as well. So it's a really good competitive league to be in. So I'm just really looking forward to the challenge. And obviously, like um, I just hope obviously that um, everything goes to plan with the season. And I'm really looking forward to it. So that concludes
concludes the video. That was just an insight and like um, of my journey and like what I've been doing the past couple of years to get to obviously at this professional stage now. Um, I hope it motivates you and hope it just obviously shows you that obviously age is no barrier. Like if you've got the motivation, if you have no determination, like you can do anything you want to do, you know what I mean? So I just hope it obviously helps you to obviously like fulfill your potential. So I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. Make sure you like and subscribe and also just keep following my journey. I'll see you in a bit. Peace.